welcome to the second video of the rust edit course and this is the basic user interface i'm not going to be covering everything i'm just going to show you the things you're going to be needed most and we'll touch on the other things along the way so we're going to start in the top left the only thing i really want to say about this is there's no export or something the save file the dot map file is the actual file you need when you're done there's just save the file there's no need to export it or do anything fancy that's the only thing i really want to say about that menu under the edit menu we got the preferences and here we can set a few things that are interesting so mainly camera speed and camera speed fast this is the speed you can set when moving around in the editor and we will be touching on how to move in the editor in the upcoming video and i will be showing these preferences again you can change the field of view to your liking and you can have a compass at the top you can turn it on and off you can also turn it on a auto save which i have disabled and you have some settings for the quality of the editor if you're having any performance issues you can try to lower these or if you have a very detailed area which is causing your computer to lag um, change some of these settings and mess around with it here's it gets a little bit more interesting um you got a little a few few options the only thing i really use is show water or the ones you're going to be using in the beginning and maybe show the scene hierarchy which will list everything that is in your scene we don't have anything in our scene at the moment so the list is empty but once you are building up a lot of things and making really complex areas you might just want to look through a list instead of flying through the area and uh, quickly being able to find something if you know exactly what you're looking for you can just search for it here there's also a few time and weather options you can change it from day to night so if you're making something for example in a cave where it always be dark you can change that right in the editor and see how all the lights will appear ish in the game and it's almost a one-on-one -on -one copy and that saves you from having to save it all out start up a server start up your game join the server just to see how it all looks in the dark very handy so this is something you might want to look into then there's a whole host of tools and um, i want to go into these a little bit more in depth so i'm going to skip these for now um, because i want to talk a little bit about the help uh, about and help which is probably the most valuable thing in here if you're stuck under the help uh, go to guides and tutorials or go to the about and help and there you can click on all these things and there's a very detailed explanation of what things do and how you're supposed to use them so if my video doesn't cover anything or you want to dive a little bit more in depth after I showed the basics, go here, go to the tutorials and there is a whole community and a whole list of guides also under the tutorials here. There's a whole list of uh, a lot of interesting things made by Kilyu who has been really helpful of making sure there's a documentation in the back end of supporting the software he's, he's building also you can join the discord and there are even more people willing to help and give feedback on whatever you're making so i want to quickly go over these on the top right i'm going to skip sockets for now and i'm only going to show you the path tools there are you can make rivers you can make roads you can make ocean path tools and you can make apc a path tool with which is the um bradley so you can make a, a custom uh, monument and then have the bradley go around it and you can make a path for it to follow um, but all these things i will be going into in their own video so i'm going to skip that for now same for the prefab list i just want to show you that the prefab list is where all the things that are in the game or in rust edit that you can use in your map are located it's a matter of finding it just by typing in the name so this has all the red towns in here it's a matter of a little bit looking around and seeing where is everything so if you go to bundled prefab auto spawn and then monument um, these are all the monuments that are in the game for example under medium you got the compound or the safe zone and the bandit town or uh, bandit camp whatever you want to call it the train painter is a very complex one and um, this will be where you are going to be spending a lot of time um, this is basically where you do the textures of how things look on the map or the, on the terrain itself um, you, the biome you can do which is basically saying is it a desert is it a snow area or is it a grassy area or temperate area as it's called um, you can do the alpha which is uh, allowing you to paint in holes in the uh, terrain for example in launch height you need that part when you go down under the rocket that basically goes under the floor level so you need to paint that out and that's all done with alpha once again i will be going in depth in this a lot more in upcoming videos i'm just going to give you a brief overview if you just want to see this 
and dive in yourself, you know where to look and what stuff is. Then lastly, topology. Uh, you have different channels of rule sets, basically. You have to paint in and according to what you paint in and what layers overlap each other, stuff will happen. So you don't have to individually put down trees in the editor. You basically paint in a combination of uh, biome, topology and uh, splat maps, so the textures, and that will automatically make stuff happen. So it will automatically spawn in those trees and they will all respawn and work as you expect. So that saves you a lot of time not having to individually put down the nodes and the trees, etc. But you do have to figure out what you need to paint in in what areas for stuff to work. Once again, I will explain in upcoming videos, don't worry. Then lastly, the terrain tool is to actually manipulate the terrain and erase it, lower it and do a lot of funky editing stuff with it and then basically make your mountains, make your hills, etc. Make your gre grassy fields, whatever you want to make, it's up to you. And this is where you actually sculpt the terrain. That's the overview. A little bit longer than I wanted to, but at least this way you have a broad overview of what is in the editor currently and where to go-ish. Let's dive into this. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about moving around in the editor because just looking at this thing in the ocean statically is not fun. <laughs> so uh, I see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this beginners to advanced Rust edit course. There will be a link in the description to the playlist that has all the videos that are currently in the playlist available. And if I helped you out in any way, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm out. Peace.